Hey guys, Jitchat Lifestyle here, back with another video. Um, I am going to play you a clip 55 seconds long, but this is from the Blockchain Association. And then I'm going to play you um, a video from the Blockchain Association where one of the representatives were uh, appeared on um, CNBC um, Crypto World um, and where they talk about what they expect to come forward, um, the lack of regulation clearly in the market, um, stable coin regulations, that are coming down the line and what they see coming forward for 2024 and how they actually operate and this video actually explains how they operate here we are the blockchain association we make sure the crypto industry is heard throughout the government we educate lawmakers and regulators about crypto networks and push for a more secure competitive and innovative digital marketplace what happens in washington dc has big effects on the crypto industry and the wider world we work with our members to create meaningful policy positions with industry consensus to give the blockchain ecosystem a unified voice then we mobilize our team to the hill and to the regulatory agencies to push our policies to policymakers. Our network has helped to connect the crypto community together. We host events and educational opportunities to create a network of individuals committed to our shared values. Working together, our efforts amplify member voices and create meaningful change in the industry and government alike. Join us on our journey. And now I'm going to play you, now I'm going to play you the video. Um, where she appeared on CNBC. I um, hope you like this kind of material because I hope this, you find this informative. The, the, the crypto space is moving forward and I think far too many of us, or far too many people are not seeing and are seeing what's happening or taking place and are fearful in particular because there's no uh, reg regulations. But I think come 2024, that's likely to change massively and especially if we have uh, stablecoin regulations, this could impact Tether at some point anyway i will play you that video and like i said if you like this kind of uh, material or content please like and subscribe take care of yourself Kristen, thank you so much for joining me today always a pleasure to catch up and what a great event you guys have put on here what have been your biggest takeaways so far you have an amazing speaker lineup what's going on yeah, no, it's been um, a fantastic day here in Washington. We have over uh, 90 of our companies represented here at the event this week. And I think, you know, the key takeaways are that we really do have some strong allies in government, um, some that really understand the technology and that want to work with us constructively on a path forward. Um, I think, you know, there is a realization, though, that there are some of those in government who haven't taken time to learn about this technology and that have thrown out proposals that uh, aren't workable or would really do some underlying harm to the ecosystem. And so I think we do have some work to do. But, you know, I think the good news is we have so many people within the crypto industry that want to constructively engage with government and they're working together uh, with the Blockchain Association and with other organizations in Washington working on crypto policy. And so I'm really optimistic as we head into 2024 that we're going to have um, some of the most constructive dialogue we've had with government yet. What's your sense of, I guess, to what extent is there still some just plain ignorance remaining versus, um, you know, people who are engaging and educating but still just have not made that connection, they haven't understood it yet? Yeah, well, I think I think it's a mix. You know, we've had some, some members of Congress, if you look at uh, Congressman Emmer, for example, he co-founded the Congressional Blockchain Caucus before the Blockchain Association even existed. And, you know, he's been working and thinking about these issues for a long time. Um, I think there's also members that sit on the relevant committees of jurisdiction, like the House Financial Services Committee, uh, that have sort of been forced to learn about this. But if you get away from some of these uh, core areas, I think we still have a lot of work to do um, to get, you know, the rank and file members of Congress or even some of the folks at the federal agencies up to speed about what we're trying to build with blockchain and crypto technology. I mean, I think the people working in this industry see this as an opportunity to reimagine our financial services system in a way that is more efficient uh, and more inclusive. Um, they also want to try to rebuild the internet in a way that gives people control over their own information. And so I think that there's a lot of like promise and potential. And the challenge we've had is that a lot of this work is still 
being built and is underway, and it hasn't fully yet translated into something that consumers and businesses use every day. But as time goes on, I think that's going to get better and better, and so I'm really optimistic uh, that the, the regulation and the policy will catch up uh, to where the technology is in you know, the months and years ahead. Okay, so we're looking into 2024. What does that work look like for you guys next year? And I know, and I know more broadly, there's the market structure bill and the stable point bill. Yeah. I want to talk about that in a second, but for your work at the Blockchain Association, what are you tackling in the next 12 months? Yeah, no, we have a lot on our agenda. Um, one, we're tracking uh, the court cases that are going on uh, you know, very closely, including Kraken and Coinbase's, as well as uh, some of the Tornado Cash lawsuits uh, and other challenges out there. And so we're always looking to help educate the court with amicus briefs um, in that process. But another area of focus, as you mentioned, is the legislation. You know, I think there, there are a couple of areas within the federal law where there are clear gaps and we need Congress to step in and provide the right kind of environment. And so it's continuing to work, uh, you know, to try to improve the market structure bill to make it something that will, you know, encourage more innovation here in the U.S. It's, it's moving forward, hopefully, with the stablecoin legislation and really helping fill those gaps that, uh, you know, otherwise the federal government is, isn't able to, um, you know, sort of assert authority over these parts of the ecosystem. And so I think that um, those are our two primary focuses. But what underlies all of this is we really need to have more education. And I think as the Blockchain Association has grown and our, as our membership has grown, we're really taking on the role as a coordinator. There's so many talented people with prior government experience, with industry experience, who are working together to tackle these problems. And so we're really excited about bringing more people together so that we can convey um, the vision we have for this industry and hopefully um, ultimately achieve better policy. What exactly is driving things or what needs to be done in order to I don't know, have a productive year, I guess, when it comes to crypto regulation. We are a year out from FTX. We just saw the Binance settlement. And I think for many crypto insiders, that sort of closed a bad chapter and allows for another one. So we have these two big catalysts coming up, the Bitcoin having, and of course, the Bitcoin ETF, the spot ETF. Um, and I would think that it was sort of imperative to have you know, clear rules of the road in place to be able to welcome new investors into the market. Um, you and I know that this industry has been asking for regulation for so long, and what exactly, like I asked at the top, would progress look like? Is it yeah. is it just more engagement, or is there a specific way that the needle needs to move in 2020? Yeah, well, and, and there has been some regulation that has been applied to the crypto industry already, and, and that makes sense, but I think it's filling the gaps that are, that are the important pieces, and... Unfortunately, some of the um, names you mentioned, I think for a while there, we had uh, some, some problems within the crypto industry, quite frankly. Like we had some bad actors among us that, that I think, you know, 2023 will be remembered as the year that we were able to, you know, sort of purge ourselves from um, being, uh, you know, having these bad actors dominate the headline and headlines and allow the rest of the industry to move forward um, with having a more constructive dialogue. So it's interesting. I think this year has been in some ways a, a quieter year because the, the drama has been less intense than it has been in prior years. But I think as we go into 2024, you know, we have a, a good plan. We have a good team in place. We have good people working on these issues. And I think that if we can do more education, bring more ideas to the table, we can ultimately get the legislation and therefore the regulation uh, that, that the industry needs in order to move it uh, to the next level. To what extent would the industry be held back, if that's even the right way to put it, if there isn't legislation that gets formally passed next year? Yeah, I don't think it necessarily has to happen next year. I think that uh, we do have a little bit of time. I mean, as I mentioned before, if you look at the exchanges or other financial intermediaries, there already are state level regulations on the books. And then at the illicit finance level, um, a lot of requirements from the Bank Secrecy Act already apply to these organizations. And so there is a structure in place. And I think uh, Patrick McHenry was here last night. And he was saying, you know, if the federal government on the stablecoin front, for example, doesn't step in, then the states will. And so I don't think that we're going to find, 
you know, insufficient regulation. I think it's really going to be a question of can we find that right balance that makes it uh, easy enough and enticing enough for companies to stay here, companies who've had to leave to come back, um, and you know, maybe even new investment coming into the United States. But I think that you know, the pieces are in place that this is a process that does need to play out and it will take time, but I do think we will arrive on sound crypto policy in the years ahead. All right, that's all for Crypto World today. We'll be back again tomorrow.